well, uh, 10 years ago, like I said, it, it seems longer ago than 10 years, but in the far distant past, uh, 10 years ago was, was a big year, actually. It wasn't just the year of the Olympics and, and Lori's great torch run. Um, but it turns out, uh, and thanks to the people who were kind enough to remind me, uh, turns out I was ordained as a minister 10 years ago, May the 14th. Um, so that happened. Uh, and I know what you're, think you're thinking, how could that possibly be? Um, you look like you're about to retire. Second career, obviously. Um, but uh, before that, I actually was uh, a min minister of sorts in that I was a musician in the church. And as we all know, we're all, we're all ministers, really. Um, but particularly if you have um, a responsibility or, or you volunteer your time um, to the work of the church, um, it, is, it is ministry, right, in its own way. And so when I say this, as I, I, was, I mentioned it because I was thinking about it, because it occurred to me that in 10 years of being a minister, I'd never actually preached on the story of the Ascension. And that might not seem particularly significant. After all, Ascension Day is on a Thursday, and so, you know, particularly in Protestant churches, we tend to not put a whole lot of emphasis on that because, you know, it's a weekday. But it's an important story. It occurred to me as I was thinking about that, that in fact, for the 30 years before that, that I was a musician in the church, I don't actually rem remember making much of a fuss of Ascension, the Ascension story then either. In fact, I'd have to go all the way back to being a kid in the cathedral choir in Toronto where the Ascension was a big deal. Ascension Day was a huge deal because there was a big service, a solemn Eucharist with incense and the whole everything. And every year in those days, the choir did a major mass setting. In other words, um, the, the parts of the service that were sung, it was a major setting by, by somebody like, like Haydn or Beethoven, um, one of their great masses, and there was an orchestra. It was, it was awesome. And I remember that and remember how it was not only awesome, it was about, you know, it was so triumphal, it was so glorious, and it was such a big deal. And then ever since that, it hasn't been. And I think, actually, with all due respect to the glory and the big deal, with all due respect to the traditions around the ascension, we tend to focus on that very thing about it. I think we have focused on the, it's the mom, another moment of triumph as Jesus ascends gloriously in a cloud to heaven. And, and of course, the reminder uh, from the, the two guys who show up to kick the disciples into action, I'll, I'll come back to that, um, their reminder that Jesus will be back. Pretty much the same way, not like Schwarzenegger, but he'll be back in the same way that he is leaving, Right? in a great cloud of glory. Oh, we're back at the cloud of glory again. And the thing about that is that I, I, as much as I appreciate all of that, I think over the years, it hasn't just been that I, I've not encountered the story. I think I have. I think my view of the story has changed. My perspective on the story has changed. Because now I, instead of focusing on the glory of Jesus, returning to the Father in heaven. Or as I've seen people mention it this week in an entirely appropriate context, Jesus decides to work from home for a while. What about the disciples? What about the disciples? They're just standing there watching him go. In fact, they're so standing there watching him go that these two other figures appear and say, why are you just standing around watching them go? And it'd be really easy to say, well, it's, that's amazing, that's awesome. Look, Jesus is ascending into heaven. But remember who we're talking about here. We're talking about a small group of people who years before literally gave up their lives, that they were living, that they were perfectly happy with, probably. Their families, their children, 
A couple of them literally left their dad in a boat working and walked away to follow Jesus. And for a while, that was great. They saw many amazing and wondrous things. The, the whole Jesus ascending into heaven thing is probably just, you know, compared to some of the other things they'd seen, it was not all that spectacular, I'm sure. But they saw some amazing things, and they learned some amazing things. But they also experienced loss and grief when Jesus was killed. Then they experienced amazement and confusion when he's alive again. In fact, he's back. This is going to be great. That's awesome. Okay, we're, we're over the whole, that's amazing, thing. but you were dead. We're over all that. We're moving on. That's great. You're back. What do you mean you're leaving again? This is where they are. Jesus is leaving again. I don't blame them for just standing around watching them go. I'm sure they were thinking, what do we do now? And, and I think that's the message we maybe want to be hearing right now in this story. Not just their question of what do we do now, because maybe we're feeling that right now. But what the response to that is. Because the response isn't just the number of times we've heard Jesus say, love one another as I have loved you. In other words, go and, go and love people the way I showed you. Go and, go and teach people what I taught you. That, that's part of it. But it's not everything. See, Jesus doesn't want them to go and just be exactly like Jesus. Jesus wants them to be Jesus, the Jesus that's in them. And that isn't just what Jesus taught them. It's not just the miracles they saw Jesus do. It's those experiences of leaving things behind, of wonder and amazement at how Jesus interacts with people, how he heals people and engages people, how suddenly they can do that too. Their, their grief at his death, their amazement that he's alive again, even even their sense of loss that he's leaving again. That's all part of it. That's all part of what they now take forward because now Jesus has passed the torch to them. He's, they, they are now the ones to be Jesus in the world. It's not over. It's just beginning. In fact, next week is Pentecost and we'll hear the story of the Holy Spirit. That, that very thing that Jesus says to them, don't worry, you will find strength in the Holy Spirit being here. I won't be here in person any longer, but you now need to go and be me to others. But, but hang on, don't just imitate me. Don't just, don't just do exactly what I taught you, how exactly I taught you that. Think of it, think of it like, all of the things I taught you, all of the experiences you had with me, all the experiences you had because of me, that's, a, that's your toolbox now. So go into the world and, and share my story. But as you do that, share the Jesus that's in you. Because Jesus is in you. God is in you. I'd give them the moment to stare at the clouds for a second. But then they got to go and do. And indeed, they do. That's why this story doesn't just appear at the end of Luke. It appears at the beginning of Acts. This is the hinge, the moment that things have changed the most dramatically. This is the moment at which the disciples need to realize they are now Jesus, what was alive, that love and grace and everything, that power, that strength, that everything that was in Jesus is in them. It always was. Now they have to share it. And Jesus has showed them how. 
and the Spirit's going to give them strength to do it. It's not just the teaching. It's the experience. It's the life experience. It's not just... And it's not just the moments of experience, it's the having learned how to turn those moments of experience into something. And it's finding the power within you to do that. We don't just try to bring life as Jesus brought life. We, we share the life that we've had. We share, we share what we've learned the experiences we've had. And, and that's not just like, it's not just like we sat in a classroom with Jesus and we learned this and this and this, do this, do that, do this. What we learned was, here's some skills. How are you living those? How are you, how are you taking those tools into the world? How are you using them? How are you engaging others? Well, maybe you could lean on some of your life experiences to learn, learn how to do that, to have that be part of it. And the experience of actually doing it helps you further the experience of doing that. that. That's what the Ascension story, I think, is about. It's not just the glorious triumph of Jesus ascending to heaven. He's still here. Everything that is Jesus was already in you and me. It's in everyone. Jesus taught us how to put that into action. Let me say that differently. Jesus taught us how we might in the future be able to put it into action. Because every moment we encounter is going to be different. Every time we love, it's not going to be the same. It's going to be the moment we're living. But those are the skills we have, so we need, to be, we need to be creative about it. We need to be thoughtful about it. We need to remember that when we bring love, it's not just us doing to others, it's them sharing it with us. It's a shared experience. Everyone's going to be different. So uh, I wanted to wrap that up today uh, in a way that uh, a, a little bit, little bit different way, but I think in a way that really speaks to where we go from here. So uh, in, in Bashaw, and I'm sure many schools do this, uh, have been doing this, in Bashaw, um, they have been providing weekly um, short, short videos and encouraging things from staff. And uh, the school in Basha is for, fortunate enough to have a community a wellness worker who is actually from the community. And... Uh, well, that's their job, with the wellness of the students. Uh, they are very fortunate that that's Lori, in fact. And this week, um, she prepared a, a, a little short video message. And it's going to talk about some things that are going to sound very specific to the kids who might be at the Bashaw School. Um, but I think in it you'll hear life moments that might speak to you too, and where she goes with that. So here's, here's a short video message from the wellness worker of the Bashaw School. Here's Lori. Wonderful ones. I was just um, looking at the days ahead um, on my calendar again and thinking about the things that would have created a big impact on our hearts. Um, the one thing that stood, there's three things that stood out. One was uh, Roots of Empathy Babies would have been celebrating their first year birthday and many milestones like walking and, and uh, the joy they bring to each of us. There would have been, um, this coming weekend would have been the performance of the senior high production of Frozen the Musical. And we've had kids in there that uh, have been performing for six years, uh, creating characters and, and dynamic, um, just joy on stage. Uh, there's also a, a student that is in each of our hearts um, and our memories uh, that would have been, we would have been thinking about how she touched our, our lives and 
uh, with her love and her light. And certainly there will be families and students thinking about her. Um, so this is what I want to say to you. Feel whatever your heart needs to feel. Honour that. Be with that. And know that it is right for you in this moment at this time. Then create from your heart. Create in unity and love and acceptance and, abund and abundance. Create community. Find friends. Friends that uh, care about you, that um, will sit with you in those beautiful feelings um, of joy and sorrow. Be with family that you want to uh, share that with. Know that you are a brilliant creator. And then I want to leave you with this. It's a John Lennon uh, saying that I love. It's uh, everything will be okay in the end. And if it's not okay, it's not the end. We love you. Take care.